Hello, everybody. We are just going to give everyone a few minutes to get set up here and joined in on um, our webinar here. So go ahead and post in the chat if you're if you're really looking forward to something and um, we'll get started in just a minute. Hello. Awesome, I see a couple more people coming in here. Give them a second to get settled. Awesome. Okay, we are going to get started here. So welcome everyone to Wellness Week Day 3. This is our, our last session for today and it's going to be a good one. So I'll go over a few housekeeping items first. Um, so this is Zoom webinar, so we can't see your faces, but um, please go ahead and interact with us in the chat. There's a button at the bottom. If you click um, up atop where you type in, you can change it from all panelists all panelists and attendees, and then everyone can see your messages as well. You can also throw any questions you have into the Q&A feature that we have enabled at the bottom there. We also have live transcripts today. So if you'd like to show those or hide those, all you need to do is click the live transcript button at the bottom and either click show or hide subtitles. We also have a survey that we'll be sending out at the end of this session to gather some feedback about what you, what you thought. And for any Horizon residents, we also have a prize of a $25 dining card um, that works at various restaurants for takeout, of course, during this time. So make sure you fill out that survey at the end. I'll be sending a link in the chat, uh, so don't miss that. So welcome to Wellness Week. If you haven't been to one of our sessions yet, um, we have been hosting virtual sessions all week. We'll be continuing to do so for the remainder of the week. And this was really born from Horizon Housing, the organization I work with. We're an affordable housing provider here in Calgary. And we really wanted to bring wellness into the homes of people during this time when we're all stuck at home. And wellness is really at the front of our minds after this tough year. So we actually work with about 40 different agencies here in Calgary that provide a variety of supports and services. One of them is the lovely Momentum. And they, they really are, do a great job of supporting and providing various services. And so we thought, let's bring those people together and, and let's create a week full of wellness, everything from finances to mental health, physical wellness and we just wanted to make it a week where we could all virtually come together learn a little bit about wellness and really set ourselves up for some success going forward in our wellness journeys so today's session we have budgeting 101 with jody from momentum i am so excited she is the financial empowerment facilitator there which is a great title i love it <laughs> and she uh she works with momentum which is a fantastic organization um, that combines social and economic strategies to help reduce poverty we've got so many great programs and services that i'm, I'm sure jody's going to touch on a couple of them here but uh, Jody is just fantastic. Uh, she's a wonderful person and I am gonna pass it off to her so you can learn all about budgeting from the expert herself. <laughs> Take it away, Jody. Thank you, expert. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty big word, pretty big word. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and then we can dive right into the budgeting. I hope everyone is able to see that now. Um, like Maria said, if you have any questions, please feel free, drop them in the question and answer, um, and we can go ahead and answer them. I know some people prefer questions at the end. I don't mind questions throughout. It really just depends on what you're feeling, whatever works best for you. Um, but really, that's what I'm here for is just to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, grab the reins and get started. Like Moira said, Momentum, you know what, and it's not just because I work here, we are a fantastic agency in Calgary that does a lot towards helping people create that thriving local economy and, you know, sustainability um, and really being able to just contribute to their communities. 
Okay, that's really what we work towards. Our money management, which is what I am the lead for, is one of the programs. And in that, we go out into the community and we teach five different classes, budgeting, credit, assets, banking, and consumerism. Today, we're going to do budgeting, which will be a great, great resource for you. But if you're interested in any of the other ones, visit us at Momentum.org. I do them on Monday nights through Zoom, much like this. Um, you are able to come and participate and listen and really just gain the knowledge that you're looking for in any of the other programs. Okay. If you do all five programs through Momentum, you also get a certificate. And certificates are great. They look fantastic on your CV. And it's just that little bit of a boost to know you've engaged in some financial wellness. So it's really beneficial. We have many other programs, uh, trades training, where you come and you start your training at Momentum, and then you move into SATE. We've got some Tech Plus training. We've got to start your own business, matched savings. We have a financial coach. There's just so many programs, um, and it would take me quite some time to talk about them all today. So what I'm going to say is visit us at Momentum.org. Lots of information there, and you can definitely reach out if you have any further questions. Perfect. Okay, budgeting. Let's dive right into budgeting, shall we? We can't really build an, a, a really extensive budget today. That's the truth. And, and the reason is because, you know, it takes quite a bit of time. We would need to sit together, look at lots of your income and expenses and all of that. But today, what I'm hoping we can do is really get that bones, right? Give us the bones um, of what a budgeting, what budgeting looks like, and just give you the skills in your pack pack to do it for yourself. Okay, that's really what we're hoping for today. Okay, the first piece uh, when we look at budgeting is our relationship with money. That's really the first thing we want to look at. You know, we all have our own relationship with money. Um, it comes from when we were children. It comes from now as adults because it continues to change. Uh, we all have our own ideas and beliefs and values around money and what we do with our money. It is shaped largely as children with uh, input from our parents and our family members, our aunts and uncles, our grandparents, our community at large, right? Um, did we live in plenty? Did we live in scarcity, right? All of those kinds of things. What were we taught as children about money? Um, and what do we continue to do with our money today? Because our relationship with money will evolve over time. Right. I mean, maybe we lived in plenty as a child and scarcity now, vice versa. Right. Maybe we've got a large family to take care of. Maybe it's just us and we have a job. Maybe we've got no job. Right. And there's all kinds of things that can affect our relationship with money and really understanding our relationship with money is absolutely the first piece, the first piece. And the reason is, is because it defines how we spend it. It defines how we spend it, what we spend it on, how we use it, are we generous with it? All of those things come from our relationship with money. So a little bit later, when you're on your own, having a glass of tea out in this beautiful sunshine, going for a walk, whatever it might be, I want you to think a little bit about the word money and the word budget, okay? And I want you to imagine what feelings come up for you at that time because those feelings will help you look at your rela relationship with money right um, oftentimes we are fearful around our money we feel pressure um, we feel scared right some of us have the flip side and we feel joy we feel freedom we feel planning all of these kinds of things but it's good to investigate it, right? Start thinking a little bit about it and see why our relationship is causing us to spend the way we spend. And that's really the first part of budgeting because budgeting is a plan for our money. It's making our money work for us, right? Um, so often we work for our money every day, all day, just trying to get more money, um, almost to the point of exhaustion. And so hopefully what today can do is give us the freedom and the tools to see how we can make our money work for us um, versus us working for our money, okay? So the first step is understanding our relationship with money. A big piece about that is tied to our thoughts and beliefs. So like I said, I want you to think a little bit about what the word money brings up in you and what the word budgeting. I'm so sorry. Oh, 
please excuse me. I'm sorry I didn't get to the mute button quick enough. Excuse me. Okay, so <laughs> what both of those things bring up in you, right? And the reason is because often what we think about something affects how we feel about something and then affects what we do with it, right? So this is closely tied to our relationship. So how we think about money affects how we feel about it and what we do with it, right? Just like I said, our relationship defines how we're spending our money every day, right? When we think about savings, this is a really good one to think about, okay, or one, uh, one to, to, to analyze, because often um, people come up against savings and say, I don't, I can't save, I can't do it, I don't have enough, this isn't going to work for me and my family, right? So they have that negative thought process, I can't do it, I don't have enough, and they start to feel like, yeah, they just can't do it, and so they don't do it, right? But if we can flip that coin to, I can save. I have a little bit of money. Maybe I can save a little bit extra, right? And start thinking a little more positive along those lines. We start to feel better about money and then even feel better with what we do with it, okay? Has anybody heard of the secret? The secret. Um, if, maybe if you have, or if you haven't, it was very big a few years ago where, but they believe that what you put out there is what you get back, right? So if you put out positive things, positive things will come back to you. Well, you know what, y'all? I firmly believe it. I believe in it. Not that you can sit at home and say, I can budget. I can budget and never do anything with it. Or I can win the lottery and all of a sudden have money fall through your ceiling, right? That's not what I mean. You want to just change your thought process in a pattern that is more positive. Like, I have enough. I can save. I can try and budget. All of these things will start to affect how we feel and then what we do with our budget and our money, okay? This process is actually based on something that we call cognitive behavioral therapy. And what cognitive behavioral therapy means or what it is at the root is challenging our thoughts and beliefs in order to change our behavior, right? So we wanna think about and challenge what it is that we're thinking about and it'll help affect how we feel and then what we do, okay? That's what this is based on. Okay, perfect. So there's a great question that just came up and it's, you know, is cutting costs part of budgeting? Do we need to cut costs first and then we can budget? In my opinion, no. I would say the first thing is to find out what your expenses are. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that very soon. Okay. Um, so we'll go over that for sure. That's a great question. Okay, perfect. So the next thing I want us to look at is our needs and our wants, our needs and our wants, okay? Needs are everything we need to have a good life, right? Everything we need to have a good life. And there's always the three basic needs that we all have, food, shelter, and clothing. Wants are everything else, okay? So we have our needs as our basic things that help us live a good life every single day. And our wants are everything else, okay? Defining your needs and wants is a very important step in budgeting, and it's really the next step after understanding why you spend what you spend, okay? When we think about needs and wants, it's important to note that they're both in our budget. You want to try and put both in your budget. People will often say at that very beginning exercise when I talk about, you know, what feelings and thoughts do you have when you hear the word budget? People will often say restriction, saying no, can't have. Right. However, budgeting is actually, in my opinion, saying yes to as many things as possible. That's what budgeting is. So that means there will be room for your needs and your wants in your budget. This is really important, especially if you have a well-defined, if you understand what your relationship with money is, you are better able to define your needs and wants, right? Recognizing who was that Slurpee a need or a want? Um, did I buy that food because I needed it or wanted it? Did I buy new runners, even though I've got runners in the closet because I need or wanted them, right? All of these kinds of things are better able to be identified once you understand your relationship, okay? So needs and wants absolutely belong in your budget. It's also important to remember that they are different for everyone, okay? Nobody's needs and wants are identical. A quick example of that would be 
I am a social worker. I have to have a car. It's written in my contract. If I don't have a car, I don't have a job. I don't pay my rent and I don't buy food, right? But maybe if you live in the inner city and your grocery store is right by and your work is close by, you can take the bus, right? You might not need a car. So it really can be dependent on who you are and what situation you are. It's also important to note here that you define your needs and wants. You define them, okay? I can't say, nope, you don't need a car or nope, you don't need to have that. You don't need a new winter coat. I don't get to say those things. You define what it is that they are for you. And if you're a couple of people, that's important to note because my needs and wants and my husband's needs and wants are so different. However, because we're a couple of people, we've had to come together and learn to negotiate them, find a way to fit them both in our budget, right? Find out what is prioritized um, from each of us and put them into our budget. Okay. Our needs and our wants, they also change. They change over time. They're not going to stay the same your whole entire life. When I was 16, my needs and wants are very different than my needs and wants now, right? Um, when I had three children under the age of three, you know, I needed formula and diapers and a car seats and all of these things. I've got two in university and one in grade 11. Luckily, luckily, none of them need those things anymore. So my needs have changed over time, right? One day when all three of them finally move out and start their own careers, they're going to be different then too, right? So they change over time. The example I just gave you is large. That is over my lifetime, right? So let's look back to March 15th of last year. March 15th, the whole world, or at least all of Canada, our needs and wants changed immediately, didn't they? Uh, depending on if we lost a job, you know, with COVID happening, did anybody get sick in your family? We couldn't grocery shop anymore. Like all of these things changed instantly. And so they, we had to make adapt adaptations, right? So it's important to note that your needs, your wants are both in a budget. They're different for everyone. Only you define them and they will change. Okay. They will change. It's also very important to note that it's up to you to decide how much you wanna spend on your wants. Just like I said, they both belong in your budget. You figure out the priority of them and you decide how much you spend on them, right? Saying yes to as many things as you can, okay? Perfect. Okay, so what is a budget? Well, that's a great question because so many people say, oh, it's restrictive. Oh, it's freedom. Oh, it's, there's all these different answers. Well, the bones of it is a budget is a spending plan for your money. That's 100% what it is. But if we think about it in a positive manner, that this is a good plan and we feel good about it, then we're more likely to engage in it that way, right? So recognizing that it is a valued part of our life, okay? A budget is made up basically of our income and expenses, right? Income and expenses, those are the bones of what goes into a budget. But it is a lot more than that. Uh, budgeting is a skill, okay? This is a really important note. Budgeting is a skill, right? We are not born walking, talking, or budgeting, my friends. So it is definitely something that we have to learn how to do. And as we become more skilled at it, um, it is easier. It comes more by nature to us. Um, and it just, it makes it much more easy to engage in, okay? Like I said, budgeting is not a diet. It's not a diet for your money. It's a plan for your money, right? It is planning for the future. It is setting goals. Um, it is engaging in behaviors that fit you and your family the best, okay? Oh, yeah, Jessica, I mean, that's a great question. So we'll just pause for a second because there's a couple of questions. Just talking about your food, right? Um, eating half of his food and him eating my food, right? Um, it, you know, I honestly can't say whether or not you should buy your food and he should buy his separately. In the end, that's something you definitely would have to come together and negotiate and maybe just sit down and look at the cost of it, right? What fits best for you um, as a couple of people? Um, I can't on this side of it tell you what to do. You need to, I think, just evaluate what those expenses are together and decide how it will fit, 
right? Um, and how much does it cost to eat healthy per month? Yeah, I also don't have that answer either. I mean, I could tell you what it costs for my family to eat, but there's five of us, <laughs> you know, so it's, there's quite a bit uh, of, of variety without, without, within the world. So it's honestly something that you, I think, need to sit down and kind of negotiate together and explore together. But those are great questions. Thank you for asking. Okay, perfect. So budgeting isn't a diet, right? It's not a diet. When you budget, you actually get a plan. You have a plan for your money. You're able to see where your money is going and how it's being used, right? When you budget, you feel less stressed and more in at the beginning. When I have people think about money and budgeting, some of the words that come up are stress, anxiety, fear, right? All of these things. And they're common. And that's okay. If those are your feelings, that's for sure okay. But I'm hoping that you can see by the end of today that budgeting helps you feel less stressed, helps you feel more in control, right? Helps you know where your money's going and, and not feel at the end of the month like, oh, can I pay my rent? Or, oh, am I going to be able to pay my utilities, right? This way you will know, yep, I'm in control and I know how much I have to spend, right? It's a really great tool. Budgeting also helps you focus on your goals, right? You can look at your future, you can examine what's important to you, and you can set goals accordingly. Budgeting is freedom, I would say. It's freedom, okay? So now we've understood the relationship with money, why we spend what we spend, you know, we've talked about our needs and our wants and how to unpack them and define them. Okay, we have talked about what a budget is, a plan for your money, a way to set goals, all of these things. Now let's look at the pieces, okay, the pieces of a budget. The first piece really is income. And income is just like it sounds all of the money coming in to your house, income. And so this is everything from government benefits, if you have a job to your wages. This is gift from families, if you get any gifts from your family. Taking the bottles back is considered income. So any money that comes into your house that you can spend is considered your income. Okay, the next piece is expenses and it's money you spend on things, okay? All of the money that you do spend on things and services are considered expenses, okay? There's three main types, three main types. The first one is your monthly fixed, monthly fixed. That happens every single month and it is the same every single month, monthly fixed. So y'all, this is things like your rent or your car payment if you have one. If you buy a bus pass every single month, okay? Monthly fixed, it doesn't change. The next type is your monthly variable. And monthly variable means it still happens every single month, but it might be a little bit different each month, depending, depending on what's going on. So monthly variable would be things like your food, your grocery bills your utility bills, okay, those are considered variable expenses because they still happen every month, but they might look a little different, you know. What I spend on my um, groceries in the summertime versus what I spend in the middle of winter are very different, right? In the summertime, my family, we eat watermelon and sandwiches pretty much every day. Our budget is pretty cheap in the summer. Come winter time, when one of my daughters is still in high school, I've got to buy her school snacks. December, when it's holiday time, I spend way more money on groceries on the food that we buy, right? So it will change each month. Even our utilities will change. Again, in July, when it's warm outside, my utilities are quite low. Middle of January, my utilities are usually a little bit higher, right? So your monthly variable will change each month. And then lastly, there's the irregular expenses. And irregular expenses are expenses that happen every year, for sure, throughout the year, but at varying times and varying degrees, okay? This can be 
Your car registration, for example, only happens once a year. This can be birthday gifts for family members. This can also be emergencies, like maybe the tire comes off your car, or you need new work boots, or you need a new winter coat, whatever it might be. These are irregular expenses that should be planned for, but don't necessarily happen consistently. Okay. When you look at these three expenses and you're thinking about, I need to control my spending, the best place for you to do this, the first place to look is within your monthly variable. The reason is you can use coupons, right? You can shop at the superstore instead of Safeway. Maybe you can access the food bank. You can wear a sweater and keep your heat consistent. You can turn the lights off in the house. There's all kinds of things that you can do to try and control these expenses a little, okay? So your monthly variable is generally the first place you look when you want to change your expenses, okay? So where we think our money goes and where our money actually goes very rarely line up, right? We can say, oh, I probably spend this much on, on groceries or my gas maybe cost me this month per, uh, this much per month. But the truth is, unless we know exactly how much we're spending, we cannot budget effectively. And the reason is because we just guess, right? We can just guess how much we maybe spent, but maybe we're way off because we forgot about this extra trip to the grocery store or we forgot about the extra gas tank we had to fill, right? Those kinds of things. So this next bit we're gonna talk a little bit about is how to track our expenses, okay? The first thing I like to chat about is the receipt or the bank statement method. And so what this means is every time you go to the store and you make a purchase, you keep your receipt. You take it home and you can put it in envelopes, um, you can put it in a xylophone, whatever works for you, but you categorize it, right? Food, gas, bills, whatever it might be, fun money, whatever your different categories are. And then at the end of the month, you're able to add them all up and you know. I find the receipt method to be just a little bit tricky because if you don't want to, you know, track that coffee and donut that you just ate, you can crumple that receipt and put it in the garbage, right? So you have to really be disciplined when you're looking at the receipts or bank statement method. When we look at bank statements, what that one is, is we have our bank statements and we can go through them, right? Maybe we highlight our food bill in purple, our fun money in yellow, our rent in green, our gas in orange, and we just go ahead and highlight all of these different things, right? This is fantastic because it gives us that really quick visual to see, oh, I've already spent this much on groceries this month, or whoa, I've been to Tim Hortons too many times this week. I should slow down, right? And it gives us that really quick visual, helps us be accountable, okay? Another way that I like to track our expenses is through online trackers, right? Online trackers. And so what these are is they're actual within our banking apps. So if you bank at the big five, I know for sure at least each of them have online trackers built right into their apps. So they track all of our expenses for us, really easy, almost no work necessary for us, right? They keep track of each time we spend our money. So it's a really handy way to do it. There's lots of different ways to track our expenses, right? It's important that you find what way fits for you. Maybe y'all guessed that I one time crumpled up my coffee and donut receipt and threw it in the garbage. So receipt method doesn't work so well for me. You want to pick one that works good for you. What fits you? Because you have to think it's working, feel good about it in order to do it, right? So you want to make sure that it is fitting your, uh, your lifestyle, your way of budgeting, okay? Uh, before we move on to the next portion, I see another question. Um, is there a percentage of income that should be budgeted for variable expenses? That is a fantastic question. And I get those kind of questions all the time. How much should I spend on rent? How much should I spend on food? And again, that has to depend on you, right? I mean, they have the, the, the general rule of thumb is you aren't supposed to spend more than 30% of your income on rent. Well, I don't know how many of us in this room are renting in Calgary right now, but the rent here is astronomical. 
and most people spend more than 30% on their rent. And so it's similar with your variable expenses, right? Um, again, there's five people in my family. So I can tell you how much we spend on our groceries, but maybe it's just you, or maybe it's you and a partner or something like that. And so, you know, in the end, you have to find what fits best for you. That's why tracking your expenses is so valuable. Then you can see, oh, this feels like it might be too much or not quite enough, whatever that might look like. I wish I had an easy percentage for you, but again, it's really going to be dependent on your situation. I hope that answers your question okay. Okay, perfect. So we've talked about our relationship with money, why we spend money, our wants and our needs, income expenses, and ways to find out what our expenses truly are, okay? So now let's look at the next piece of budgeting. I believe savings is a very important piece of our budgeting. It is a very important piece. Savings allows us to set goals. Savings allows us to have hope for the future, right? To achieve things that we want to achieve. Savings ensures that our money is working for us versus us working for our money, okay? So let's look at a couple of tips in saving money. The first one really is put it in your budget, okay? Just find a way to put it in your budget, okay? And then you want to make sure that you're paying yourself first, right? Pay yourself first and make it automatic. You know, the bank pays themselves first and absolutely makes it automatic. And we often don't even realize that we're paying those bank fees each month. Okay, so you want to try and engage in the same behavior, paying yourself first and making it automatic. A large piece of this, paying yourself first and making it automatic, in my opinion, is also grace. Okay, what I mean by grace is knowing that you have put it in your budget, paid yourself first and made it automatic. You've moved that money into a savings account. Okay, maybe it's 20 bucks a month and off it goes into that account. And then mid month, you recognize that you need milk or you need to get on the bus to go somewhere, right? You're able then to access that savings in order to do those things that you wanted to do. So you have that grace to ensure that you still get to do the things that you need to do. But y'all, some months, you're not gonna need to access that savings, right? So some months, it'll continue to build over and over, right? So you'll get to increase your savings amount which I think is also fantastic, okay? The next piece when I look at savings is to have a goal, right? To really know why is it that I'm saving this money? What is it that is important to me that is causing me to engage in this savings behavior, right? When we think about a savings goal, it's very important to know what our goal is, to name it, right? to have a why behind it. Why are we savings? Why is this important to me, okay? You also wanna build a timeline around that. You can say, oh, I'm gonna save all day long, but until you have something that is measurable with a timeline, you're more than likely not going to engage in it. So you wanna think about your goal. You wanna have a why behind it. Whys are so important. You want to give it a timeline for sure so that you've got an end date that you're looking forward to. But not only that, you want to make a plan which includes figuring out your monthly savings amount. So, you know, if your goal is going to Disney World, you want to decide, okay, this is how much I need to save per month and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use coupons. I'm going to shop at the superstore. I'm not going to drink coffee every day at Tim Hortons, whatever it might be that is in your plan. Okay, and you want to put that into place. Okay. If you are looking for some, you know, savings goal, maybe you're struggling or you can't think of what kind of savings goal can I have right now? An emergency fund is a fantastic savings goal. Okay. Again, we'll talk about March 15th of last year. Very many people needed to dip into their emergency fund because the world changed. Canada changed drastically, jobs were lost, things shut down. We couldn't just hit the superstore. 
There was a run on toilet paper, somebody said in the chat a little bit earlier. You know, absolutely. All of these things happened um, and we needed to be able to adapt to what that looked like, okay? Many people had an emergency fund. It is a great tool that helps us overcome emergencies, whatever they may be, whether it is COVID-19 hitting, a job loss, a car accident, a family member dying and you needing to go home, right? My sister, she adopted a dog a few years ago, Liesl. Liesl is her name. Liesl ate six socks within two weeks of my sister owning this dog. She had to have emergency surgery costing my sister $3,000. That was an emergency, right? She didn't plan for that to happen. That was an emergency. Emergencies can be anything from needing new winter boots to, like I said, an accident or whatever it might be, right? Um, and so it's good to have some sort of a cushion, some sort of a savings. The general rule of thumb that is out there in the community is that you should have three months, three months worth of your expenses saved, okay? That can be scary and intimidating. I know when I think of three months worth of my own expenses, it can be very overwhelming, very overwhelming. But honestly, saving any amount is a good amount, any amount, because it starts that savings behavior. It gets you thinking about, hmm, I can do this. I can try this. Recognizing that there might be things that you need to save for, okay? Any amount is a good amount. People might start $150 a month. That's not fair because other people aren't aware completely of what your budget looks like or your expenditures. And that's just added pressure. If we feel pressure and negative, we're gonna think that we can't do it. We're gonna feel bad and we're not gonna do it. So that's why I'm here to say any amount, $5 a month, $10 a week, $100 a month, if that's what you have, any amount is a great amount to start that. And it does make a big difference over time, okay? All right. All right, everyone. So we talked a lot about our relationship and understanding why we spend, our needs and our wants. Uh, we talked about all kinds of things about our expenses and our income and our all of it, right? What makes up a budget, savings and how it's important in a budget. So now let's look at building it, okay? Building it. Before I do, a question just came up about the emergency fund though. Should your emergency fund be separate from your savings fund? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. And in the end, it's up to you to decide. Can you have two separate savings accounts going? Does that fit your budget? Does that fit your goals and your needs? An interesting thing, and I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but savings accounts at the big five banks, for sure, at least, are free. You can have the savings account with no monthly fees. And within that, you can have one or two transactions. So you can transfer money in or out once or twice per month for free, okay? So if you wanna have an emergency fund and a Disney World fund and put a little bit in each, that's great, right? Um, in the end, it has to be up to you whatever fits best, right? And, you, and the cool thing is also about that, you can name, and I think this is fascinating, you can name your savings accounts as well. So you could have your car, and your emergency savings accounts, right? Just to help you with that. So yeah, in the end, um, it's up to you. If you want your emergency fund to be separate, then that's great. If you want it to be one that you can access at different times, that's also beautiful. Either works. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for these questions. They're so wonderful. Okay, so let's talk now about building our budget, building our budget. So we know what our income is, we know what our expenses are, and we maybe have a little of idea what we might wanna start savings. So now how do we engage in this behavior, okay? The first thing you do is add up all your sources of income. So look, what are your government benefits? What income do you have? Do you get any side hustles? Do you have gifts from the family? Anything like that, and add up your sources of income your next step will be to subtract them, right? So you take your expenses because you've tracked them, you know what they are and you minus them from your income, okay? So 
income minus your expenses should equal zero, should equal zero. You want to balance your budget to zero. So this is sometimes where people might say, how can I balance my budget to zero? I like to have a cushion. I like to know there's a little bit of wiggle room in my budget. That's fair. I understand that. I also have wiggle room in my budget. But my challenge for you is, is to take that wiggle room, to take that cushion, take that blanket, whatever you call that little bit of extra money, and move it into savings. Move it into savings. Okay. So this is beneficial on a couple of levels. First of all, you've created that behavior change. You're moving that money into savings. Second of all, you're making your money work for you, right? In your checking account, there's zero interest. In your savings account, it's maybe two or 3% interest, but that's 3% more than your checking. So you're earning a little bit of interest, okay? Another benefit is when something is once removed and we have to work harder for it, it really makes us think twice. Think twice about whether or not we are going to do it. So what I mean by that, you come across your cushion, you move it into your savings, right? Off you go, you're walking through the mall and there's a great pair of shiny red new boots, beautiful, right there. And you want them. You look at the price tag, but in order for you to buy them, you have to go into your savings account and move it into your checking account and then buy it. So you really want to be sure. You have to know, yeah, I want those 100%. They're part of my budget. I'm going to make it work, right? So moving it into a savings account can be very, very beneficial. Okay. On the flip side of that, sometimes we get to our budget and we're in the red, right? We're in the minus. We're spending more than we have. Okay. And that happens sometimes, right? So if you come up to that point, what I recommend is sitting down and having a look at your monthly expenses, your monthly um, variable expenses. Your groceries is the first place I always say to look, right? always get couponing, access the food bank if you need to, those kinds of things, okay? Look at your utilities bill. Can you make any changes there? Uh, look at your fancy drink Friday, whatever it might be, and see where you can make changes, okay? If you can't, then you might need to investigate something else like looking for a different job or some side hustles, taking the bottles back, those kinds of things, right? Balancing your budget to that zero, okay? Once you have done that, you need to review it and adjust it monthly, right? Review it every month and adjust as you need to. This is important because remember when I was talking about your expenses and how they will change and your wants and needs will change over time. And I, I mentioned that my grocery bill in the summer is different than my grocery bill in the winter. So I don't want to have the same budget in the middle of July as I do in the middle of January, right? You want to really be aware that you might need to adjust it as time goes on, okay? Perfect. Okay. Oh, y'all. Once you have a budget, now what? Now what do you do? You know, sticking to your budget is probably, I would say, the hardest piece in budgeting, sticking to your budget. And there's lots of things that come in play uh, when we're looking at trying to stick to our budget. For instance, impulse buying, right? I know I love to impulse buy, unfortunately, for my budget and my husband. Impulse buying is really not... Uh, not beneficial for most of us, okay? Um, you want to ask yourself, do I want or do I need this? We have learned to identify the difference, okay? We've learned to identify. So you want to ask yourself, do I want or do I need this? You want to ask if you're buying it only because it's on sale, okay? This is really important because I find it to be a major trigger for a lot of people. If you walk away with nothing else today, I want you to walk away with this phrase imprinted in your brain, okay? You don't spend money to save money. So important to remember. So if you're walking through the mall and you come across the t-shirt that's on sale, but you didn't intend to buy it, you're just spending. You're not saving, okay? Even if it's on sale. Now, if you're at the grocery store and milk is on sale, you're saving. That's different because you were intending to buy the milk. Do you understand? So just remember that. You don't spend money to save money, okay? If you're a credit card user, right? Find out, am I gonna be able to pay this off at the end of the month, okay? Also, you wanna ask yourself, am I gonna be happy tomorrow? Am I gonna be happy tomorrow that I bought this, 
right? Um, oftentimes we get that buyer's remorse, right? So give yourself, give yourself a little bit of time. You want to stop and think about the value, the price of it. Is it the best price? This is a big question to ask. Is there something else that I won't be able to buy if I make this purchase? Really important to think about. Another one, ask yourself, how many hours do I have to work to buy this, right? How many hours? What does that look like for me? It gives you a whole different value. Listen to yourself, okay? If you feel nervous or guilty, wait 24 hours. Give yourself the 24-hour rule. Go home, think about it. And if you're waking up the next morning being like, yeah, I need those red boots, then off you go. You've made an informed decision, right? Really pay attention to how you're feeling. The next thing I want to talk just briefly about is creating change, because maybe we've recognized in our lives some places that we need to create some change, some spending change, okay? Change your habit is one of the first steps I look at, okay? And what I mean by that is if you drive by Tim Hortons every day that you go to work and you spend your money and you're finding that that is what is best in your budget, take a different route. Calgary has many streets and avenues that we can drive down to get to where we're going. OK, change your thinking as well. Can you shop at the thrift store? Right. Can you eat no name tomatoes instead of the brand name tomatoes to save that 88 cents? Because sometimes the savings is drastic. Right. So really change your thinking right when you're looking at it. And then the next way that I love to talk about when we're looking at changing our behavior is something that we call the step down method. Okay, it's also known as harm reduction, harm reduction. And what it means is the likelihood a successful behavioral change is greater when the changes are small over time. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. The likelihood that successful behavioral change is greater when those chances are or when those changes are made small over time. That's what the step down method means. Okay, so let's look at it like this. If you eat out five times a week, at 100 times, uh, $100 per week, you're spending $400 a month and you're saying to yourself, I can't afford this. I need to make that change. Then what you want to do is slowly, because remember I said successful behavioral change is greater when it's small changes over time, okay? So the change you're going to make is next month, I'm only going to eat out four times. So I'm not going to stop eating out, but I'm going to eat out four times, okay? $20, $80 a week now, I'm saving $80 a month. This feels good but I wanna save just a little bit more. So next month, I'm only gonna eat out three times a week. Okay, $60 a week. And look at what you're saving, $160 per month. And then it's up to you to evaluate, is this where I'm gonna stop or am I gonna keep going, right? This method is so valuable. And I love the front end of this course with the CBT, the think, feel, do, and the back end of the course with the harm reduction because both of these principles can be applied outside of budgeting, right? Outside of budgeting. You can use them in everything in your life. If you want to create any behavioral change, the chances of it sticking are greater if it's small changes over time, okay? So for example, you can also step up. So what I might mean here is I can save $5 a week for the next eight weeks. After eight weeks, I look at my budget and I say, I think I have room to save $7 a week for another eight weeks. This is still working within my budget. I might do a little bit more and save a little bit more, okay? But remember, I said you can use this everywhere. You know, if you wanna start exercising, okay? The chances of you waking up seven days a week and running on the treadmill for 60 minutes every single day is very slim if you just think you're gonna start doing it immediately. If you've never run before in your life. So my thought would be you wake up maybe three times a week, half an hour early and start running and then four times and then build yourself up to five times and then you build your time up over time, more likely that change will stick. Okay, so that's important to note. You can use this through everything in your life. Okay. So I think I have ended with not too bad of time for questions, if anybody has any extra questions. Um, and then I have a couple of slides that I'll go through at the very end, but 
Does anybody have anything they want to type in the chat? I mean, we had some good discussion in there around toilet paper and people giving tips on how they're spending and saving their money and how they pay their rent first and their groceries. Does anybody have anything else to mention? Yeah, go, go ahead and throw any comments or, or questions in the chat or the Q&A, um, and uh, we'll, we'll answer those now. Jody, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I know I gained a lot of stuff out of that session, too, and I really, like, I really like that it's step down and step up. That's really cool. You can make those small changes, become part of your life, part of your habits, and, and I can see how that would really help um, make those changes in the long run. Um, I think a question just came through in the Q&A. Yeah, it's a, here's a reframe. So budgeting is a tonic. Yeah, absolutely, right? It's something It's a, something that will help us achieve a goal that we have, right? Yeah, I agree. Um, so somebody mentioned they have a terrible time listening to budgeting and savings. Uh, Rick, would that be just because it feels pressureful um, and maybe, you know, a little bit nerve wracking for you? I hate to make assumptions, but um, in teaching this class, those are definitely things I have come across before. Yes. And you, you commented all of the above. And, and I, I agree. Uh, um, it can be very hard. But I'm hoping by the end of today, you can start looking at, you know, looking at it as more as a tool, a tool belt that you can hopefully access. Right. And maybe savings isn't in the cards for you today. And that's OK. But it could be something you engage in a bit later. Right. Once you've worked on your budgeting for sure. Um, somebody commented they made their children read The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, talking about paying yourself first. Yeah, investing and budgeting. It's all important, right? Absolutely. And oh, that's yeah. a Sorry, I was just going to say there's one more comment, and that's a fantastic one, right? Use your credit card and then pay it right away. Right. Um, and that way you avoid that balance. You avoid paying the interest. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, my husband does the same thing. Everything goes on his credit card from gas to going out for coffee at work with his buddies, whatever it might be. But he pays it immediately. Sometimes I'm irritated because I've got somewhere to be. He's filled my car and he's paying before we can drive away. <laughs> but at least it's that behavior that continually paying it off. Right. Yeah, that's a fantastic tip. Thank you for sharing that, Miles. And I have another question too, Jody. Um, this came up in our previous session, and, and I think this is a good chance to touch on it. But um, do you have any tips or apps that people could use for budgeting and savings? Okay, yeah. I mean, for budgeting, I don't know a lot of the third party apps. I would hate to be the person that recommends an app and then something go amiss, like, you know, it gets hacked or something like that. So for me, I really stand firm in not recommending a specific budgeting app, right? Um, like I said, the big five banks, you can track right within there. Um, and again, that's the big five. So we know they're secure and, and you know, they're safe for you to use. Um, but I would say if you're going to use a third party app, research, 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 that's the most important piece before you do, right, just to make sure, okay, what it is that you're using. Um, as for a savings app, I actually have one, um, I'll just zoom through these last couple of slides, quickly, money management, budgeting, and the other four courses are Monday nights from 630 to 830. I did notice at the very beginning, somebody mentioned that they had attended them before, and I hope they enjoyed them. Um, so if you feel like you want to join them, please, at any time, um, visit us at momentum.org and you can register. The great thing about those courses is they're actually on demand as well, which means they're asynchronous. You can sign up at courses.momentum.org and you can take all five of those classes in an hour or so learning by yourself, clicking through the slides. So whatever works best for you. Okay. Um, and then here it is. We actually have a savings app. OK, so it's not our app. It's called the Cuber app. It is a third party app, but it is vetted completely by Momentum. Not only that, but most of us at Momentum use this app for some sort of savings challenge of our own. OK, you can go in and set any kind of savings goals and it helps you just it takes the money automatically and it puts them into savings for you. OK, but 
The cool thing is if you download this app and then you look for the Momentum Savings app within there, you can actually join the challenge, okay? And if you save $40 a month for 10 months, we will give you $100, meaning you'll walk away with $500, okay? So it's a really great deal. Um, I see that Moira put it in the chat. Feel free to click on it for more information. Um, and like I said, it has been vetted by us and lots of us use it. So this is one exception to my no recommending third-party app rules, <laughs> okay? I see a question, is it best to use a spreadsheet? That's a really good question. And you know what, in my honest opinion, is use what works best for you, right? So remember the very beginning, we talked about think, feel, do. So how we think about it and feel about it affects what we do with it. So if you understand spreadsheets, if you are able to use them and you feel good, then yes. When I think about myself, Excel is my mortal enemy. I can't understand it. I can't use it. My eyes cross. I don't use Excel, but lots of people do very successfully. So find what fits and then you'll know if it feels good and you will continue to do it. Okay. I don't think there is one best way to track your expenses or budget. I think there is a best way for you individually, but there isn't one best way. Okay. You need to find what fits. Google Sheets will work too if that fits for you. If you know how to use it and, and it's flexible within your lifestyle, absolutely. Google Sheets can also be good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, thank you everyone for sending in all of your chats and all of your questions. And big thank you to Jody. Thank you so much for coming and being part of Wellness Week. This was such a valuable session. Um, you know, we all need those reminders and help in terms of budgeting. It can totally feel scary, um, but you know, you, you made it seem very possible and I'm super excited. Um, there will be a survey that pops up after this session on your screen. I'm also going to send the link in the chat. Um, so we really appreciate all of your feedback in terms of this, this virtual session as well as Wellness Week in general. And if you are a Horizon resident, fill out the survey and that's your chance to win a $25 dining card. So thank you everybody so much for attending and um, tune in for our next Horizon Wellness Week session tomorrow at 11 a.m. We are talking about building skills and confidence in the workplace. So hopefully we will see you all then. Thank you once again, Jody, and take care, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye, Moira. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful day.